Cecile, because of all the questions about whether these plaintiffs even had standing to sue, do you have some hope that this court will not, uh, maybe even because of the Dobbs ruling that said the states should have these decisions, would not let this Texas judge's ruling obtain for so much of the nation? Uh, I think that is a distinct possibility, Andrea, because, of course, first, important to re remind folks, mifepristone, which is the most commonly used form of abortion in the country, is safe. It's been approved for decades, um, used by so many women, uh, in, not only here, but around the world. And so the judge's opinion in Amarillo, the Trump-appointed judge who has his own anti-abortion sentiments, was not based on any health care concerns for women or the efficacy of the medication. And it's really unprecedented to have a judge over uh, overrule the FDA. So there's every reason to believe that the Supreme Court could say this this decision, this original decision, absolutely should not stand. Uh, now, you, as you said, and as Laura said, it's true that the, the original opinion and Dobbs said that this should be a state by state issue. But of course, the judge in Amarillo, his decision, if it if it stood, would mean that medication abortion was unavailable to all people in the country, including those states where abortion is completely legal. And what would be the impact of that? I mean, one of the issues here is also that he ruled, he put extraordinary restrictions, in the original ruling at least, restrictions on how it could be used. It had to, you had to be in the doctor's office. You could not get it in the mail. You could not get it at a pharmacy. And it, the number of weeks, it was seven weeks when before most women know that they're even pregnant. That's exactly right. So first, I also want to want folks to know that as of this moment today, you can get medication abortion in this country. That's important to remember until we hear from the Supreme Court. But you're right. The Fifth Circuit opinion reinstated all kinds of restrictions that were outdated and unnecessary and made it, will make it really difficult. Uh, if it's upheld, will make it very difficult for, for women, particularly those who live in states where abortion is uh, no longer available. Uh, it, this is, in a way, they're trying to rely on an 1873 law that prohibited sell, uh, sending medication through the mail. Uh, this is just incredible. And uh, the chaos that women are facing in America is unprecedented uh, and it's dangerous for for women it's dangerous for their health i hope the supreme court here does the right thing what about the regulatory issue for the fda because this if this decision does go the way of the texas judge or the court of appeals this is not based on science or medicine and it could affect right. how many other prescription drugs including birth control Right. I think it's really important, Andrea, that that's why we've never seen this before, where actually a federal judge says, I'm going to make a decision and contradict uh, the Federal Drug Administration that we all rely on for the safety uh, uh, of, of medications in this country. It's unheard of. It's unprecedented. As you say, it has nothing to do with the health and safety of women, and that should be our foremost uh, consideration. I think that's why you've seen pharmaceutical companies, the entire medical establishment, and women uh, be outraged over this this particular decision by a, one judge in Amarillo. Cecile Richards, as always, thank you very much.